At Marshall's Michoud operations in New Orleans, the first S1C stage Y ring was completed by Boeing in mid-February using the recently installed 42-foot boring mill to machine the ring to precise measurements. Machining of the second Y ring has now also been completed. The initial ring was removed from the boring mill for shipment to the Marshall Center, where it will become part of the structural test tank. Machine marks in the open V cut on the top of the ring were removed by hand grinding. The V forms the junction of the bulkhead and the inner tank or inner stage. The two-ton ring was carefully wrapped and sealed to provide protection during handling and shipping. The ring was shipped by barge from Michoud on February 22nd and arrived at the Marshall Center 10 days later. Work on Michoud's S1C Vertical Assembly Building continued this quarter with relocation and installation of underground pipe and electric cables accomplished. The foundation for the hydrostatic testing and cleaning pad was also under construction. This is the last station for the booster before it is returned to the final stage preparation area in the main plant for outfitting. The VAB will have three turntables with the pits housing the turntable gears recessed in the foundation. When the building is completed, it will consist of two sections, one for booster assembly and the other for hydrostatic testing and cleaning. At Rocketdyne, F1 engine work this quarter included assembly of an experimental concentric tube injector. Prior to installing the faceplate, the igniter tubes are placed in the body of the injector. There are 21 of these elements, one for each compartment in the baffle. LOX tubes are inserted through the back of the injector. The concentric fuel tubes and the baffles are then installed on the face. In operation, Oxidizer is swirled in the center tube to form a cone of spray. The fuel in the annular element is impinged on this cone and mixing occurs. Since injector elements are eight different lengths, eight flame fronts are propagated in the combustion zone. It is believed that this multiple flame front and concentric injection will increase dynamic stability. Testing of model Mark 10 inducers was conducted in a water tunnel under various operating conditions. Instrumentation photography permitted observance of such phenomena as cavitation, backflow, and blade tip vortexing. At North American Space and Information Systems Division, contractor for the S2 stage, bulkhead tooling was being installed this quarter in the new Seal Beach, California facility including the bulkhead gore segment welding tool, dollar weld tool, the autoclave, which will provide heat and pressure for bonding insulation to bulkheads, and the acid bath tank for the etching room. The S2 electro-mechanical mock-up scheduled for first use in July is being fabricated and assembled at S and ID's Downey plant. The mock-up will be used in three areas, manufacturing, to check placement of lines, components, and engines for interference and accessibility, testing to check out compatibility of flight systems as units and with each other, and GSE development to check out automatic GSE and make check out computer tapes to be used with flight stages. Fabrication of the S2 battleship test stage depicted here in model form, is proceeding on schedule. Initial use is set for the first quarter of 1964, marking the first time for J2 engines to be fired in cluster. Fabrication of the S2 structural stage for use in checking entire vehicle structures is also underway. At SNID's El Toro facility, activated this quarter, High energy forming tests have been successfully performed on waffle sections of the S2's common bulkhead. The part to be formed is embedded in a castable epoxy urethane.
an explosive charge of Primacord is used to provide the shock wave for forming. At Santa Susana, rough site preparation of the coca area of Rocketdyne's propulsion field laboratory has been completed. The S2 battleship will be installed in test stand number one. Test stand number four is being prepared for installation of the all system stage, the first flight weight S2 test vehicle. At Rocketdyne, contractor for the J2 engine, common to S2 and S4B stages, a relatively new metal forming technique, electrolytic erosion, is being used in manufacture of J2 injectors. The forming die, made of compressed graphite, acts as an electrode, and a non-conductive oil removes the eroded material. Build-up of facilities for the J2 engine program at Propulsion Field Laboratory at Santa Susana continued during the report period with work on the liquid hydrogen storage area, run tanks, and horizontal and vertical static test stands. At Douglas Aircraft Company, Santa Monica, fabrication of production tooling fixtures for Saturn V's third stage, S4B, was well underway this quarter. The first vehicle manufactured will be used for hydrostatic testing. A full-scale engineering mock-up is under construction for use in verifying flight type system compatibility with ground support equipment. Both tank domes have been completed and installed in handling jigs. The forward interstage structure was attached to the forward dome and the aft skirt to the aft dome. Work is proceeding on design and layout of automatic checkout ground support equipment and its housing facilities. Four complete sets of ground support equipment will be fabricated. The testing program in progress for S4B includes research, development, qualification, production, and reliability verification testing. Construction of the S4B static firing test facility, Complex Beta at Sacramento, is progressing satisfactorily. A contract for the battleship tank for test stand number one was awarded this quarter. At Huntington Beach, construction of the Douglas Space Science Center is also underway. This facility will include an assembly and hydrostatic test tower, mock-up and fabrication building, space simulator, and S4B systems integration area. Structural design layout of the Saturn V instrument unit which will be located between the S-4B stage and the Apollo spacecraft, is in process at the Marshall Center. Guidance and control, tracking and telemetry equipment will be mounted around the periphery of the unit, which is 3 feet high and 21 feet 8 inches in diameter. Circulation of a coolant through panels will provide temperature control. The unused volume in the center will allow the legs of the Apollo's lunar excursion module to extend into the instrument unit, thus shortening Saturn's total vehicle length. 